Hello, everybody. Happy Saturday. Today is April the 11th. Hmm. Let me see if I can get this video pulled up. It's going to take a second. Come on in. Today we're making the tea leaf block. This is going to finish as an eight and a half by eight and a half inch quilt block. Eight inches in our quilts. All of the measurements are up on the screen for today's block. I'm going to leave those there for a second. So just in case you missed yesterday's video, you have a chance to grab those. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much, Miss Chantel. Thank you for moderating. Thank you. Today we're going live a little bit earlier. I have a busy, busy afternoon lined up. And so I thought we could go on a little bit earlier today. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Yes, the tea leaf quilt block. That's what we're making today. Another eight inch quilt block. Just letting you know, I've planned out the next 10 quilt blocks because I start a commissioned quilt on Monday. And so we'll be going live and then I'll be working on a quilt. Going live, working on a quilt. So I got a lot of the behind the scenes things done and lined up for our videos. It's Saturday. It's Saturday. Good morning. Also, uh, yesterday I showed the quilt block that we're doing tomorrow for Easter Sunday. Uh, that is the Easter Bunny. If you look in the description box, you'll see the free download. It is in the description box of yesterday's video, today's video, and I'm going to put it in tomorrow's video as well. If you're on the Creative Crew group and you haven't gotten it yet, it's really easy to get it there. It's pinned to the top of our page and it is put into the file section of our group. Yes, I have four fun questions lined up for today. Some of them are food related. <laughs> Y'all know me. And uh, yes, this is the block for tomorrow. Tomorrow we're doing, <clears throat> pardon me, raw edge applique. Raw edge applique. The, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm losing my voice this morning. The PDF that you will download is a two-page PDF, and it'll look just like this. I had to split the bunny up because he's too big to fit on one page. <laughs> I'm going to show you what to do with that tomorrow. Let me get a sip of Gatorade here. Come on, boys. You can work this morning. You can do it. You can do it. I will put on the uh, screen the bunny block one more time before we finish up for today. Let's bring back the tea leaf block. Those are the measurements that we're working with today. I've already cut out all of my pieces. And uh, yesterday, I had a fabulous box come in the mail from Miss Sally. Thank you, Miss Sally. Wow, I was totally surprised with that. And uh, so I had to break open those fabrics. Today I cut all of my pieces from a, a charm pack called Dragonfly Summer. They're so pretty. I just couldn't help myself. I had to open up a charm pack to do this block. Teresa, you're still making face masks? You go, girl. That is awesome. That is so awesome. I'm sure that they appreciate that a lot. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> oh, Dunder Mifflin is only the greatest paper supply company there ever was. <laughs> right, Darcy? <laughs> I just have to say, if you're not an Office fan, my mom cannot stand that show. I tried to get her to watch it with us. She was not amused whatsoever. And I if I can watch the same episode 10 times in a row and still laugh as hard the 10th time as the first time I watched it. And I'm sorry. I, I just have a, a soft spot for Michael Scott. He is highly inappropriate most of the time. But if you really look at his heart, 
He just wants people to like him. He just wants to spend his life with people, right? I sometimes can relate to him. In real life, outside of YouTube and Facebook, I have a pretty quirky sense of humor. <laughs> I can kind of relate to Michael Scott, but he just wants people to like him. He just wants friends, right? I love him. So yes, this is the block that we're making today. The tea leaf quilt block. It's going to be a fun one. Let me go ahead and show you all of my pieces. And if you're sewing with me live, plug in your iron and get that warming up. Wake up iron. And set your seam allowance to a quarter of an inch. Yes, Dundon, Dunder Mifflin is the, the best paper company ever. <laughs> I love that show. I love it. So here are all of my pieces, y'all. I've labeled them so you can see them. All of my little pieces. There are quite a few little pieces for this block, right? It's only an eight inch block. And I just kept cutting and cutting and cutting. But here they are. Actually, even though this block has several pieces, thank you so much. Hi, Miss Diane 57. Thank you, Chantel and Diane 57 for moderating my chat. Y'all are awesome. Even though there's a lot of pieces, they're actually going to come together pretty easy. And we're doing half square triangles again. Feel free to use your preferred method for half square triangles if you want to substitute them. You're free to do that. That's That would work great too. Good morning, everybody. So I think for today, we're going to go ahead and get started. I know we are early, so I'm probably missing a good portion of everybody. So if I came on early and you missed me, I'm so, so, so sorry. I have a lot of things to do this afternoon. So we're going to come in early. I hope you watch this on the replay if you missed me live. To get started today, we're going to be working with the background three pieces that are two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And the green pieces, there's three of those two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. Those are going to make up our half square triangles for this block. So I'm just going to move everything else out of the way for a minute as we concentrate on those. We're making one cut through all of these blocks. I'm just going to line all of mine up. Dun, 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 dun. I can move over here a little bit. I'm going to line up those corners to a line on my mat. Just like this. And we're making one cut. It's a diagonal cut right through the middle. That's the first thing we're going to do today. Right through the middle. Don't move around. We're early today, y'all. You can tell my hands are still a little shaky. <laughs> that doesn't usually stop until about midday. So here's our triangles. We now have a six green triangles and six background triangles. <clears throat> and that's what we're doing to get started. And now that we've made those two cuts, we can go ahead and lay out this block. Let me bring in this yellow cutting mat because I think it'll make it easier to see all the pieces, hopefully. And we're done with all of the cutting. So let me shift everything around. Good morning, everybody. Let's go ahead and ask our first question for the day as I lay out this block. Oh, yeah, I think that'll make it a little bit easier to see, right? Our first question of the day. Have you ever sent a text message 
to the wrong person. I did this not that, well, it wasn't a text message. I called somebody. I called the wrong number. Uh, let's see, as I lay this block out, I'll tell you my little story. Uh, and I'm going to try to do this upside down so that it makes more sense to you. My daughter got a new cell phone a couple months ago, and I never deleted her, her old cell phone number out of my phone. About two weekends ago, I called her old phone number, and a man answered, and I was like, who is this? <laughs> and he said, who is this? You called me. And I'm like, you have my daughter's cell phone. How did you get my daughter's cell phone? He's like, no, ma'am, this is my cell phone. And I was arguing with him. I was like, how did you get my daughter's phone? Then I realized <laughs> I called the wrong number. I had to apologize. I sent him a text and apologized when I realized what I did. <laughs> it scared me, though. All right. To get started, we're going to lay out our two two inch by two and a half inch background pieces. We're working from the middle because that's just how my brain works. And then the one brown piece that measures one and a half by four and a half. We're going to start at the middle. So we're starting at the middle. Here is the stem for our tea leaf two background pieces. Next we can bring in at the corners of our block. You should have four two and a half by two and a half inch pieces. They go in the corner, down at the bottom. And then we should have two green pieces that are two by two and a half. Oh, I've got some triangles underneath my mat. Thank you. I will be looking for those. <laughs> I sure did. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. You're looking out for me. I would have been like, where are my triangles? Okay. So the two green ones go right there. Then we've got this one a longer one. Y'all, it's two and a half by four and a half. That's going to go right there. Then we're laying out all of our half square triangles. We're going to have one that goes like this. One that goes like this. This one goes like that. This one goes like that. Like that. And like this. Look, I'm able to work upside down, y'all. All right, you see the tea leaf already starting to form, right? We're going to bring in the background triangles and lay, lay those in. I bet that man thought I was crazy. I wanted to argue with him. It scared me. I thought her phone was stolen or that someone, like, I don't know. The worst things came to my mind immediately, and it scared me. But then I realized what I did, and I had to apologize to him because I wanted to argue, which is not like me, but I was scared. Now we should have two, a two and a half by two and a half inch squares left over, and those go in our corners. Now I'm going to give y'all a minute to catch up and lay out your blocks if you're sewing with me live. This is the order that they go in. That's the order that they go in. So great to see everybody. Thank you, Diane57. I always throw the 57 in there because we have several Dianes. <laughs> Th 
Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all. Yes, isn't this tea leaf block so cute? Miss Debbie, thank you so much. Thank you, Debbie. I saw on Facebook that you've found some black elastic for your mask. I was excited for you. I was excited for you. Oh, on that note, I saw a post, and I don't know how true this is, but if you cut apart a bungee cord, Harlan has a bunch of them. I'm going to cut one open and see if it's true, but I heard that if you cut apart the casing of a bungee cord, it's filled with a bunch of little elastics. I don't know if it's true or not. So here's where we are with our layout. Jerry, you have a lot of green scap scraps. You can't decide which ones to use. Yes, Mama Bear Syndrome kicked in. I was like, and then Harlan was standing there, and I was like, Harlan, somebody's got Bethany's phone. And he immediately picked up his phone and started calling the right number for her. <laughs> she was probably like, what in the world is going on? We got it all straight, though. Very true, Vicki. You can make them with ties. You can make them with elastics. Sally says, no, don't do it. They are made from latex. People with allergies will be in trouble. Yeah, see, that's why I don't usually say stuff about the mask, right? <laughs> that's why I don't usually say anything. All right, here we go. We're going to go ahead and start putting together. Where's my little marker? Over here. We're going to start sewing this block together. And as I get started, I'm going to ask our second question for the day. Uh, the second question is in 40 years from now. Okay, so y'all know how right now we look back in the past and we're nostalgic for things that we remember from our childhood. Um, like I love the little suckers. I don't know if you ever remember them. They were on a little white stick and then the sucker was about this tall. I think it was called bats suckers. They were like hard taffy with chocolate, strawberry, banana, peanut butter. There were a few different flavors. I look back and I remember those. Thank you so much, Hazel. Happy Easter. In 40 years from now, what do you think that we will look back onto our time now and be nostalgic for? Does that make any sense? In 40 years from now, what do you suspect that we will look back and be nostalgic for in our time right now? To get started sewing, we're going to sew these half square triangles I'm turning my lighter triangle over onto the dark triangle. I'm going to do that for each one of them. For each one of them. And then I'm going to take my little marker. And I'm going to mark the seam that I'm sewing so I don't get mixed up. When I bring everything over to the sewing machine, just like that. So I'm going to do some chain piecing. I've already set my seam allowance to a quarter of an inch. If you're sewing with me, make sure to do that. And we're going to do some chain piecing. Pumpkin spice lattes. Yeah, we'll be like, you remember way back when, when they used to do pumpkin spice lattes? I'm going to match up these raw edges. You can pin your triangles if you want to. And I'm going to just go ahead and chain piece each one of these six half square triangles.
I know my fingers are in, are in the way. BB bats, yes. That's what they were called. I love those so much. We're on our third set. Our fourth set. Our fifth set of triangles. And this is the hardest part of this block, y'all. By now, we should be getting really good at doing half square triangles, right? One more. I've had so much fun reading y'all's answers at night. All right, just like that, the hardest part of this block is done. That's the hardest part of this block, y'all. Cut. And now I'm just gonna separate all of my little half square triangles. Just like this. And then I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm going to trim off these little dog ears. I hope y'all are doing really fantastic today. What is the weather like where you are? That's not one of our questions for today, but I'm just wondering. I've heard a lot of people are getting snow. Once I get these pressed, I will go through and see if there's any questions. What I'm really hoping though, is if you have questions, you'll ask them, but I'm also hoping that you use this time to chat with everybody because that's one of the main purposes of this live video, right? Hopefully we learn something. We do some really cute blocks, but the main thing is that we spend this time with one another. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a press. Wake up, I know you wanna sleep. So as I get them pressed, I'm going to start laying them back down in their right places. Ooh, I love these fabrics, Miss Sally. They're so pretty. So pretty. You go right there. And you go right there. Nope. No, you don't. There you go. <laughs> Am I the only one who talks to my quilt pieces? I feel like they cooperate better if you treat them like people. There you go. All right, y'all. That's the hardest part of this block. And now we're just going to be 
assembling all of these pieces. And I'm gonna show you the order that I would put this block together here in just a minute. I'm gonna give y'all a minute to catch up if you're doing this live with me. Go through, see if we have, Sue, you're getting four to six inches of snow tomorrow. Goodness, happy Easter. You can build a snowman. You could build a snow bunny. Wow, it's so great to see everybody today. Cannot wait to go through and read the conversation. Oh, it's 80 in Florida. I'm so glad I'm not the only one who talks to my fabric. <laughs> I talk to my sewing machine a lot too. I talk to my computer a lot. I talk to my cell phone a lot. So this is the layout for the tea leaf block. Just make sure, yes, I've got it all laid out right. Thank you so much, Miss Chantel. Thank you. Our third question for the day, we'll ask that and then I'll begin piecing this block together, is a food question. Do you like cheese? What is your favorite kind of cheese? Diane, you've found yourself talking to a lot of things in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a pretty common occurrence, right? What is your favorite kind of cheese? Like I like blue cheese, I like provolone cheese, I like mozzarella cheese, but my most favorites are processed cheese foods like jalapeno cheese dip <laughs> by Fritos in the little metal can or Tostitos cheese. It's cheese mixed with salsa. However you say that. My favorite cheese is processed cheese foods. But I do love some provolone cheese. I'm not a huge fan of Swiss cheese, but uh, I love the provolone. Oh, you're making lasagna today. That sounds delicious. Cheddar cheese. I like Colby Jack. That's delicious. All right, we're going to go ahead and start piecing this block together. The very first thing I will do is a uh, piece of these two little blocks so that this section and this section ends up the same length as our T stem, right? So I'm gonna just place the background block right onto the green ones. We're gonna sew those two seams first, okay? Kobe Jack cheese. Ooh, I like pepper jack too. I will say, I love cheese. Cheese does not love me. <laughs> I think I'm a little borderline lactose intolerant. And so it gives me an upset stomach if I eat too much, but I love it. All right, we're just gonna sew these two seams first. Remember when you bring your pieces over, we're sewing the shorter side, not the longer side. I'm gonna give those a quick press. I'm going to press them over to the dark side. That always sounds funny when you say press to the dark side. <laughs> I 
All right, now with these two units done, they should be the same exact size as the little stem for our tea leaf. So you know what, there's so many different ways you could approach sewing your block together at this point. Right now, I'm gonna make this a solid unit, okay? I'm gonna turn the corner squares onto the half square triangles. If it helps, go ahead and mark those seams so you don't get them turned around because they're the same size all the way around, right? I'm gonna sew those. Cheesecake, yes. Ooh, cheesecake. Let's bring over this other set of units. I'll separate those and give those a press. Bringing those back just like that. We're going to be sewing lots of little seams, but it's going to come together pretty quick, right? Yes, it reminds me of the uh, Star Wars 2 when I say that. So now all of the seams from a top to bottom to top here are the same size. Just gonna start doing some chain piecing and I'm not even going to iron in between. I'm just gonna stay at the machine and bring the next piece over and we're gonna add it. So let's flip this section right there. We'll match up that middle seam at the sewing machine. Make sure everything stays nice and straight as possible. I'm just going to flip this open and give that a finger press. Just flatten it out a little bit. We'll press it once this section is all done. I'm going to bring over this stem and add it. Just like that. Open up that stem, finger press that down. We're gonna bring over this next unit, flip that over and add it. And we have one more piece to add to this section. Here's our little stem. Isn't that cute? Just like this. We're gonna match up that seam right in the middle, right here. And then I usually straighten out the rest of it down to the bottom edge. Now 
Now here is that whole bottom section. I'm gonna go give that a press and I'll check for questions if we have any. That is super cute. Look at that. Yee, there's the bottom section. <clears throat> Thank you, Miss Chantel. Thank you. Let me get a sip of water. And if you're sewing along with me, you have a chance to catch up. Oh, a fabric called Trellis by Fig Tree. That sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. <clears throat> so at this point, I think you can see that we have two rows that we can join together, right? This will come together as a row, and this will come together as a row. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We'll flip this one over. So there is the right side added, okay, and I'm just going to finger press that because we can add the other side while we are still here. So let's flip that down, we'll spin it around and sew the other side. And now I can take this whole row and give that a press. Mm. So here is that row. We're coming along. I'm gonna give you just a second to catch up, but I think you can pretty much figure out the rest of it, right? Now we're gonna be joining these pieces and I'll do all of that at the machine and press when I'm done. So we'll go ahead and ask our fourth question of the day. And it's also a food question. I woke up hungry this morning, y'all. How do you feel? You know, this is a big, this. It's funny, what is a controversy on Facebook, right? You either love it or you hate it. How do you feel about putting pineapple on pizza? I love pineapple on pizza. You either really like it or you really don't, right? How do you feel about putting pe pineapple on pizza? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and sew this row together. We'll flip, and it doesn't really matter which side you start on, right? <laughs> I'm gonna start over here on this side. Vicki, no, you don't like pineapple on pizza?
All right, we're just gonna stay right here at the sewing machine as we piece these together. Just gonna flatten that seam out a little bit. We're gonna add the next one. I always like to check it before I flip it. That's our third piece. Just flatten that out a little bit and we're adding the last piece for this row. So yeah, we have a bunch of little pieces in this block, but they're coming together pretty easy, right? I'm gonna go ahead and press these. Now because I have these half square triangle seams, I'm gonna press it to the corners, these corner blocks, even though it's the lighter fabric, these seams want to lay down in that direction. So that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do. So here's the top row, y'all. At this point, it's gonna be super duper easy because we're just flipping this row onto these two rows that are joined together. We're gonna sew that seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. Ooh, pineapple on burgers. That sounds delicious. I've never had that before. I love food that's sweet and savory all at the same time, so that sounds kind of delicious. <laughs> now we're going to go ahead and sew this seam, and I like to match up these seams as we go through, if possible. <laughs> You could certainly throw some pins in those seams if that helps you. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a press. Angel, I don't, uh, I don't, when I'm making quill blocks, I don't usually do any back stitching at the beginning and the end because that's gonna be in our seam allowances. And when we join this quilt block to the next, it's going to lock all of these seams together. Let me go through. What is the reason for chain piecing? Is it to save thread? For me, it just saves time, right? This uh, quilt block has quite a few pieces. And if I can do a good majority of sewing at one time by chain piecing, if you're making tons and tons of quilt blocks with little pieces, it's going to save you so much time. You don't have to do it that way. What stick length are you using? On mine, it is 2.0. It's the default on my Juki HZLF600. Uh, when I hit the number two, it automatically sets my quarter inch seam allowance for me and it automatically sets my stitch length at 2.0. Uh, but all machines are different and uh, you might want to use a smaller stitch length uh, when piecing smaller pieces. That'll help your stitches from becoming unraveled at the edges too. But also sometimes one thing to think about is sometimes those smaller stitches on certain machines want to bunch up your fabric so 
it's different for each one of your machines. I think this is going to be a really cute quilt block. So there we are. And now we just have this last row. We're going to flip this top row right on to the bottom, right? We're going to match up these three seams. And so from edge to edge. Actually, there's only two seams to match up because <laughs> that's a bigger piece, right? We're matching up seams here and here, there and there. We're almost done with this block, y'all. Almost done. I'm going to give this seam a press and then we're done. My favorite thread, we're all different. So you're going to get answers all across the board, right? You have some purists who only piece and quilt with cotton. And then, uh, and then you have people like me. I use a polyester thread. So we're all different. And I think it's really what your machine loves, right? <laughs> it's going to depend on your machine. This machine, my Juki, loves this polyester thread. And uh, so that's what I use. However, you'll see, just like Vicki says, she always uses cotton thread when piecing. So we're all different. I really like this quilt block, y'all. I really like this quilt block. Look how pretty the tea leaf is. Eee, that's so cute. What brand? Uh, that's going to be all across the board, too, right? Uh, my favorite. My favorite. You're going to get 50 million different answers on this, too. But I use AK Trading Company thread. It comes. You can find it on Amazon. Comes in great big spools. I use a thread cone uh, behind my machine. There's 6,000 yards. You get four of these for $16.99. And uh, it's great for piecing and quilting. It holds up really well in my long arm. And I piece with it. That's just me. I also like YLI UU Universal uh, Thread. And I piece and quilt with that. I don't have any kitty cats. Mm. Vicky. 
I know a lot of people who only use cotton to piece with. I piece all of my quilts, Miss Vicky, with a polyester thread. And uh, wow, I've never had an issue, never had an issue with my polyester thread. I do, I machine, well, what do you say vinyl? Like vinyl decals on t-shirts like this? I quilt through stuff like this on t-shirts, t-shirt quilts. Just looking through to see if I've missed any questions. I don't think I have, but uh, Miss Vicky, I would love to show you my bird, but my bird absolutely despises my studio. We tried to acclimate him and bring him in for short amounts of time, but he's such a scaredy cat. <laughs> he's right now, he's in our bedroom, through that door in our bedroom. We try to bring him in here, but he does not like this. It's got too much stuff going on in this room for him, and it scares him to death. He does not like this room. But I've tried to acclimate him in and bring him in for a second and then take him out, and it scares him, and I almost feel bad. So I, I'm probably going to stop doing it because he's just, for whatever reason, is scared of this room. He's scared of a couple of different rooms downstairs as well. He also does not like going outside. If you take him outside, he has a hard time with that. <laughs> He's a scaredy cat. I know, I feel bad for him. He doesn't like coming in here or else I would bring him in and show him off. You know, let him entertain you for a minute, but he doesn't like this room. Oh, vinyl for purses. Uh, I've never used vinyl for purses. I've never sewn with that kind of vinyl, so I'm not quite sure. Hello, Miss Anitra. You caught us live. I'm a little early today. So you can read by the comments. We have uh, sewers and quilters and piecers all across the spectrum. Mixed, mixed answers to the thread question. Cotton and polyester and, uh, and different brands too, right? I think sometimes it really depends on what your machine wants to sew with because they have a personality all on their own. So this is our little tea, tea leaf block. I'm going to go ahead and pull up tomorrow's block before we close for today. If you hadn't already gotten it, there's a link down in the description box for the free pattern. It's a two-page PDF. Just like this, we're going to be doing some raw edge applique. Okay, and this bunny rabbit has already been mirror imaged for you. So if you're using a fusible interfacing like Heat and Bond Light or Wonder Under, then you're ready to start tracing with this template. If you're going to use freezer paper and glue to do your raw edge applique, that would be awesome. Uh, if you want your bunny face into the left of your block, you will then have to trace your image onto the back side of the paper first and then use that side to make your template. He's always been, um, he's always been scared. We got him when he was six months old and he is 11. He is always, he does not like going outside. He always has his favorite rooms of the house and rooms that he will, he just doesn't like going in. Nita, you have an umbrella and a golf in. 
Ah. Is your umbrella cockatoo as, as finicky about different rooms of your house as ours is? So yes, I am excited to put this little quilt block up on the design wall. I think he's really cute. I do. I like that a lot. I love the fabrics I use. Thank you so much, Miss Sally. That's adorable. That is adorable. So tomorrow you will need just two fabrics, right? You're going to cut your background fabric to 12 and a half by 12 and a half. And you need a scrap piece of brown fabric that is at least 9 inches by 10 inches. Or 10 by 9. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but it needs to be about that big so that you can cut your bunny rabbit from it. Actually, it doesn't even have to be brown fabric. You could make your bunny whichever color you want. Let me show you what this block would look like repeated as a quilt. If you want to make an Easter bunny quilt with him. That's what your quilt would look like, something like that. And uh, But you could do so much with this little pattern. Uh, you could make placemats, table runners, a little Easter wall hanging. You could applique it onto a t-shirt for Easter. There are some ideas. My bird, he is 11. Yes, he's adorable, right? That little bunny. So tomorrow you will need your two fabrics and uh, some fusible for your applique. We're doing raw edge applique. Or if you want to do it with freezer paper, freezer paper and some glue. Sue, you couldn't get it to print? Do you do Facebook? And uh, it's a PDF. So are you using something like Adobe Reader? to open up your PDF. I'm just gonna wait and see if we have any more questions. Uh, is anybody else having an issue of printing out their bunny? Aw, oh, Vicki, that's so sad. Yes, they love the attention, right? Uh, when we moved to this house, we combined two houses, my parents' house and our house, and they now live with us. And uh, they sleep downstairs. We sleep upstairs. When we moved here, our bird threw a fit when we would come upstairs and leave him downstairs. <laughs> Oh, he would throw a fit in the evenings. So we had to get a cage for our bedroom. So now at night when we go up, he comes up with us and he is just as happy <laughs> as a clam. He loves to come upstairs with us. Wanda, let me see. Can I do my applique by putting pieces right side together, split it on the back and turn it right side out and then place it on the background. You could most certainly do that. That would give you a finished edge all the way around your bunny. I think the little ears are gonna be hard to turn, but you could do it. You could do it that way. If, if you're not a fan of raw edge applique, yes, you could do it that way. It would take me forever to turn those bunny ears. I'm just going to let you know, but yes, you could do it. Yes, Miss Kim, I'll put up the pattern for today's block. There are the pieces for today. Erlene, you have no printer. Uh, Miss Wanda over on the Creative Crew group, she held up a piece of paper to the screen. So she downloaded the pattern and she was able to hold a piece of paper up to her computer screen and get the shape of the bunny that way. Uh, maybe your neighbor 
has a printer and you can call them up and say, hey, if I email you this file, can you print it off and leave it in your mailbox for me? That's an option. Yes, my parents are still young. My parents are still young, but when we moved, we consolidated the two houses to this house. And so they have their suite downstairs. We have ours upstairs. And uh, yeah, they're here with us. They're pretty active. They do a lot of photography, but right now we can't do anything, right? <laughs> Diane, you do not have to have Dropbox to get this file. You can still access this file even without Dropbox. Now it is a little bit more trickier, but you can do it. You don't have to have Dropbox. Miss Betty, you're with your daughter? Yes, I know she's glad to have you too. So the Easter Bunny for tomorrow. Now, I know this quilt series has been about traditional quilt blocks, right? Tomorrow, it, this is not a quilt block that dates back to the beginning of quilting history. <laughs> but I just thought it would be something fun for us to do on Easter. And uh, at the end of all of this, however long we're going, I will probably... Uh, I will probably put all these blocks together as a quilt. And I thought the Easter Bunny quilt a block in there would be um, really cute to remember Easter in this quilt. I'm not quite sure what's happening, Miss Chantel. While we're having to time out people. You can get with me later on today after we're done and let me know what was happening. <laughs> you guys, y'all don't have to have a Dropbox account. You don't have to have one. To get it however it's the easiest way that I can give away free patterns ah I got you Chantel okay uh, I don't know of any other file sharing software that is free that I can widely distribute free patterns to everybody. I cannot put free patterns in my Etsy shop. They charge me for every single listing. So if I gave away something for free, I would be paying Etsy 20 cents every time someone got it. <laughs> so I cannot do free listings on Etsy. Dropbox is the, the easiest way that I can share. Unless you're part of the Creative Crew group, you can go there and get it really quickly. Joy, yes, the blocks up on my wall are all different sizes. In this series, we're doing quilt blocks that are all divisible by two inches. Okay, so the blocks up on my wall finish at six and a half by six and a half or eight and a half by eight and a half. We've done some blocks that are ten and a half by ten and a half and twelve and a half by twelve and a half. I'm going to put them all together as a quilt in the end. Angel Google lets uh, Google Drive lets you share for free. I will look into that. What about YouTube? Uh, 
there's no way to offer an upload on YouTube. You have to put it in some kind of file delivery system like Dropbox. All the hoops we have to jump through. <laughs> All the hoops. If you're on Facebook and you haven't joined the Creative Crew Group, we'd love to have you there. It's a great place. We have artists, not just quilters. We have people who do crochet, knitting, painting, music, uh, woodworking, basket making, all kinds of stuff. And uh, yes, we'd love, it's an easy way to share your pictures. And uh, that file is there. But you have to make sure to answer your security questions to join the group. We've had people the last several days trying to join and they're not answering the questions. It's just a vetting process, y'all. We try to keep out uh, scammers and spammers, all those people. Uh, Jill, I will try. <laughs> That's like doing three quilts for me. But I will show you how I'm doing it so that you could take all your blocks and do something similar. All right, y'all. I am off to finish the rest of my day. I hope you've enjoyed this block. If y'all have any questions and I, I missed them, I'm so sorry. Ask them again down in the comment section once this video posts. And we'll come back and try to get all the questions answered. Thank you so much, Chantel and Diane57, for moderating. Thank you so much for keeping an eye out on our chat today. And... uh. Thank you so much for the super chats today, y'all. Thank you, Miss Sally, for the fabric. You know, I couldn't just, <laughs> you know, I had to open up some and make today's quilt block. I look forward to putting this block up on the wall. I hope you have an awesome Easter. Some of you, it's already Easter where you are. Debbie. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, uh, I'm going to cry right before this. No, I'm not. Debbie, thank you so much. Thank you. I cannot wait to see y'all tomorrow. Happy Easter. I look forward to spending some time with you about the same time. But it might. I'm going to leave that flexible, y'all. Because it's Easter. And some of us, even though we're not getting together with large groups, we still might be cooking something at home, right? So... Let's leave that a little flexible, but I hope to really see you tomorrow. Kim, I saw your question and I answered it uh, before it was deleted. I think that was just a typo because you just asked uh, an easy question. <laughs> I think that was just a boo-boo. All right, y'all. I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Let's find these buttons. Find the buttons. Bye.